My response to the executive producer of America's Got Talent who asked me, Malachi, how do you survive in Detroit? Well, Lev, surviving in Detroit was never an option. When that option was placed in the hands of political devils, who decided our only option shall be in a game of Russian roulette with the lives of our children, the reason we still stay in Detroit is a suicide mission you will never understand our farewell letter. It's written in blood on picket signs raised high enough to give our ancestors a high five. The only choices we have in Detroit is between a corner church or a liquor store, cremation or a closed casket, a GoFundMe post or selling dope. Yes, Detroit is a jungle full of roaring lions who still call it home because it is, because it's all we know. And explaining that to you is beyond words you can read in a newspaper about a 13-year-old boy found dead and dumped in the field over $75 on oh, my aunt. Hit and ran down in the street. You know neighbors made more Facebook posts than 911 calls or miles away someone's child who drank tap water because he was thirsty and his insides bubbles up and dies because he was that thirsty in my city. We are all thirsty like that child for a fuel to replenish our soul that is actually only poison provided by our killer. So to answer your question on how we survive in Detroit, we survive like the voices that roam in our Motown Museum. Our back is as strong as the bricks in our school that refuse to be torn down. Our voices is as powerful as the Martin Luther King. I have a dream speech still spinning on my grandmother's turntable, still spinning, still spinning, because Detroit still spins. But let me ask you a question, Mr. Privilege. When your tour bus hit our turf, did you not see the heart in our eyes and the spirit and our soul and the fight in our children? Because if you didn't, how the hell do you survive in your small ass world? Because in our world, nothing ever dies. It is only a legacy. <laughs>